let's talk about photographing the Milky Way. Now the best time of year to photograph the galactic core is late April to late July here in the Northern Hemisphere. In the Southern Hemisphere, it's best visible during June and July. Now the galactic core is arguably the most interesting and most photogenic section of the Milky Way. So you should take a moment and add a calendar to reminder to watch this video again in late spring, early summer. But you also wanna pay attention to the moon. You want nights with no moon. This means new moon or dates when the moon is below the horizon. A quick search online yields lots of helpful info. I've linked my favorite source for moonrise and set times below. But on your device, iOS or Android, I love PhotoPills. It has at a glance moon info as well as the rise set times for the galactic core for your location and a mode that lets you overlay the night sky and the Milky Way on the landscape where you're standing. Let's talk about where you're standing. You want a place with low amounts of light pollution. To figure out the closest dark skies spot, visit the website Dark Sky Finder. Yellow is, uh, green is good, blue is even better, black is awesome. But don't let this stop you if you're in one of those more heavy light pollution areas from getting out there and trying. Your Milky Way shots might not be the best, but at least get out there, practice, develop these skills so that when you end up at the right time and place, you can get that awesome Milky Way shot. You do want to include interesting foreground elements, rocks, trees, mountains, something to ground your viewer on Earth while giving them a taste of the stars above. Gear-wise, sturdy tripod is incredibly important. I've got my favorites listed right down below this video. Lens choice, well, a full frame equivalence from about 14 to 30 millimeters works well for me. The Irix Firefly is my current budget favorite. I've got a review of several lenses perfect for astrophotography that are linked right down below this video. You could use a fisheye or shoot a panorama if you've got a full view of the sky with little light pollution. Camera settings, get manual focus during the day and then tape or lock your focus ring at that point. The infinity focus mark doesn't always mean true infinity focus. And with trial and error, you'll find out where exactly infinity focus is with your lens. Aperture, the widest your lens allows. Those recommended lenses are often at f2.8. Wider is even a bit better, though the kit lens at f3.5 is a possibility also. Shutter speed, you're probably gonna end up at around 20 seconds, but you want to follow the 500 rule and keep that shutter speed as short as possible so that the stars are pinpoints and not streaks. Taking multiple shots and stacking for lower noise, higher detail is an option, though honestly, I haven't done that. I've been happy with single shots. And with your ISO, you're probably gonna end up around 1600, lower if you've got a faster lens than f2.8, higher if you have a slower lens. In post-processing, I typically cool the image, brighten it overall, but especially the stars by increasing the highlights. And I use a brush to increase the brightness of the Milky Way and a second brush to decrease the brightness of the darker sections. Overall, increasing contrast and making that Milky Way stand out from the background more. And that's a quick look at the basics of shooting a Milky Way. If you found this video helpful, please take a moment to hit that thumbs up button and the subscribe link along with the bell notification so you'll be notified of future tips, tricks, and gear reviews from photorec.tv. Thanks so much for watching, and I'd love to know in the comments where you hope to shoot the Milky Way someday. Goodbye.